The building boom is taking place throughout Southern California. You've probably seen it yourself. Our own David Nazar has a look at the Los Angeles skyline, which is changing. I see it every day when I'm on the 110. Elizabeth and Rick, it is a boom to say the least. I mean, everywhere you look in Los Angeles, there are new skyscrapers and real estate development of some sort being built. There is also new concern as to the stability of these mega buildings during a major earthquake. Warning, if you're afraid of heights, viewer discretion is advised. If not, a view of the downtown Los Angeles skyline from 70 stories above ground is something to see. In fact, seven of the 10 tallest buildings in California are located in LA. Construction of the skyline began in the mid 1960s and it continues today. Here in Los Angeles, skyscrapers are difficult and expensive to build due to what developers call rigorous engineering standards. And that's because of the city's high rate of earthquakes and proximity to the San Andreas Fault and all the other fault lines for that matter. There are over 200 earthquake faults in Southern California, everywhere from the Puente Hills and Hollywood Faults to the Newport Inglewood and Palos Verdes faults. Nevertheless, as Hal Bastian explains, density rules. Bastian is a downtown revitalization consultant. For years, he was with the Business Improvement District as both an executive vice president and director of economic development. We met him out here on the corner of Sixth and Hope. For downtown, it kind of seems like this is the center of the universe. Well, it is, and we radiate out from it. And we have all these large buildings like U.S. Bank Tower, which is the tallest building between Chicago and Taipei in the Northern Hemisphere. She's right over here. The 707 Aeon Center, which is right behind us, the second tallest building. And downtown is all about density. We want more great big buildings here in downtown LA. And then over here is something that used to be called Arco Plaza. The two buildings, which are 515-555 South Flower, uh, they're over 50 stories tall each. So those are tall buildings. How many buildings are being built these days and what are developers working on? There's over two dozen buildings being built in downtown Los Angeles right now. Right now we have condominiums, we have apartments, uh, we have uh, the Wilshire Grand Hotel which is going to be the tallest building in downtown Los Angeles when it's built 73 stories and it's going to have a spire. It's going to be taller than U.S. Bank Tower. Are you concerned with these massive buildings these days especially because Los Angeles is basically sitting on a fault line or many fault lines? Not concerned at all. These high-rise structures that we are building incorporate best practices from cities all around the world that experience earthquakes. So the safest place to be is in a high-rise building. How are builders keeping us safe as these buildings get taller and taller? Well, there's nothing but regulation that goes into the building of these buildings, structural engineering, city planning, city uh, uh, supervision by the LA Department of Building and Safety. These are the safest buildings ever built on the, in the world stage. When do you say to yourself, you know what, it is just too tall. We have to be careful in earthquake country. There's just no such thing. We're never going to build a building that's too tall that can't withstand earthquakes because we have the engineering to deal with it. So it's really a non-issue. Dr. Lucy Jones is the well-known seismologist from the United States Geological Survey in Pasadena. Jones has a different opinion about all these skyscrapers being built in earthquake country. Am I worried that people are going to die in them? Not as, you know, if they, if they haven't followed the code, then there's a problem. But our, our code for earthquake resistant construction is make sure we can all crawl out alive. And we do a pretty good job of that, right? The problem is that's our only standard. So if the building is a complete financial loss after the earthquake happens, as long as you can crawl out alive, the code says you're fine. That was your financial choice to make. The problem is it's not just your financial consequence. The person who has the building loses the building, but the tenants lose a place to go to work. Their employees are losing their jobs. The neighbors perhaps can't go to work because of the potential that a bad building collapses on them. Uh, we can't use the street in front of it. So are you saying the LA Building Code is substandard as far as being earthquake proof? The building code everywhere is only life safety. It is not earthquake proof. It says it's your choice how strong a building you want. You just can't kill people in the process. What does it take to build above code? When we look at, at what does it take to, to build to a 50% stronger standard, you're talking about 1 to 2% increase in the cost of a project to build it to functionality instead of to life safety. Now, Dr. Lucy Jones also tells me, and this is important to note, that in the event of a major quake, there's a 90% chance you won't have any building collapses. However, she underscores, there will probably be about a 10% chance that all these new buildings will have at least a partial collapse and there'll be many 
red tag structures. Now, consequently, Hal Bastian told me these skyscrapers are specifically engineered to sway in a big earthquake. And in fact, Rick and Elizabeth, he even said he believes these are the safest places to be during a quake. I don't know if I believe that just yet. You know what, and I don't even want to be here for the big one, but there it is. I mean, so it's supposed to be in our future. Who do you believe? Who do you believe? Thank you, David. Excellent yeah. report. Thank you, David.